Hello this is Scrappy BTV with a lot of interesting videos please remember to like share and subscribe. In the coming weeks I will be and days I'll be making certain announcements regarding the acceleration of Jamaica's intention to become a fully digital society. We are well on our way to this. We have established the national identification system. We have put in place our digital currency. We have given directions to our ministries to digitalize their operations. Most of our ministries are now moving from paper-based systems to digital systems. Our military is transitioning. The society is moving very quickly, very rapidly to become digital. Our banking consumers are seeing it as well because the banks are moving very rapidly to digital. You have something now called artificial intelligence. Very soon this position of a, a human being exchanging cash and so on. That is going to disappear from the banking system very soon. And you are going to have to interface with machines. I don't want it to be a scary thought, but it is a thought that we all have to embrace. The people of Jamaica by making announcements and doing things without the necessary preparation being laid. So we've spent billions of dollars to introduce these new banknotes. And now we're being told that they can't be introduced because the existing ATM machines can't accommodate them and will have to be retrofitted. And that's going to be causing further delay. You know, this is a year later after the famous announcement of it to much fanfare by the Minister of Finance back in March 2022. And now we have the Prime Minister driving fare into people by saying that we're going to go fully digital. And that involves digital currency issued by the central bank and the phasing out of cash and so on. And this is in a society where many people don't have internet access still and where cash is very much used, especially by less well-off people. And many people don't have bank accounts, many people don't have access to banking services. Now, the truth is that the digital currency is going to be an option that people can use. It cannot be mandatory. There's nothing in the law to make it mandatory at this point in time. But the way it's being sold is as if it's imminent and it's going to replace cash in the near future. And of course, there's no preparation for that. The central bank issued some digital currency a year ago and it's hardly taken off. People are really not using it. The adoption of it by the population has been relatively slow. You know, the prime minister needs to calm down and move in a more measured way and take the people along with full understanding that this is not going to imperil them or put them at some kind of disadvantage. I, I saw some things circulating on the, on the internet. And my good friend, the leader of the opposition, uh, is among those who have circulated, and I'm being very um, polite, euphemistic, uh, circulated concerns about digital payments. There is no attempt by the government to remove cash, meaning paper money, from the system. Just stop for one moment. Just be rational. Why would the government spend billions of dollars to change currency to a new durable banknote? that we don't have to be changing it ever so often, only to turn around and take it out of the system. Don't you see it is stupidness? But the number of people who have followed it gets me worried about what Jamaicans are consuming as information. I'm worried. Where is our reasoning? And why is it so simple for us to be attracted by rumors? As your Prime Minister, I have a duty to call it out when I see it. We have spent money to put in place a new durable note. 
that accounts for the inflation in the society, the convenience of the notes that you need to make payment, and then to just turn around and say no? Come on. It's stupid. Pardon my departure from calmness. But I have to call it out. There is no mandate to be cashless. We understand that. And, and this morning I was looking at a, a very interesting um, uh, Twitter post with someone saying, with digital currency, government can restrict your transactions. With digital currency, government could get up today and say, no more, you can't do any business. Yes, there are concerns about digital currencies, uh, but you have central bank digital currencies and you have many other digital currencies that are Whatever we feel about it, there is a market for digital currencies. And people are investing in the technology and in the currency themselves. Why? Because of the convenience. The same threat that exists with digital currencies, some of the same threats exist with cash. We have seen the situation in India, for example, where the government decided that they are going to dematerialize some notes. It's the same threat that could happen with a digital currency. The, the issue is what are our laws to protect our consumers? That is what we must ask about and not fear of the technology. And I can say with the Chief Justice here that I, I am certain that our laws will be very strong and the laws that we have in place are indeed getting stronger to protect your rights. You know, there's this false notion that anonymity guarantees privacy. Privacy is only guaranteed by the laws of the country you are in. So I'd want the conversation to be more focused on how do we strengthen our laws to make sure that we protect rights. And that is where the focus of this government will be. And that's where we have always been. And that is why we have a very strong parliament where the opposition has been very strong on the point about protecting privacy and ensuring that the laws are constitutional, and we have been very strong on that as well in putting in place the laws to ensure that that happens. But this unnecessary and unreasonable and very dangerous trend that is emerging to keep Jamaica out of being on the cutting edge of development And as I said, it's very hypocritical because this, the same people who are trying to prevent you from using technology are using technology. When you see them post, tell them, come off TikTok, come off Twitter, and go and talk in the town square. So we have launched... Jamdex, our central bank digital currency. And there are a couple of banks that have launched or are in the process of launching digital wallets. As the national ID is fully rolled out, we will be giving increased focus to our national digital payment infrastructure. I, I give you an example of something. I went to, I went to Kenya. Kenya our brother country in the motherland. And uh, it, it was just an amazing thing to see that people 
in remote parts of Kenya have embraced it. Now, their payment is digital. Just see average Kenyans going into their supermarket and punching up on their phones and making payments. When I asked one Kenyan who was assigned to me as my driver, he explained that he sends his money to his mother who lives in a remote part, almost close to the desert. And he sends to her digitally and she goes to the supermarket and uses her phone. What are we saying that we shouldn't have this convenience as well? Is this going to bring the end of times? Ridiculous. I went to Rwanda, and Rwanda is even more advanced. They basically conduct most of their transactions digitally. And it is a very progressive society. And part of the reason why their society is so progressive, Chief Justice, I believe a team went to look at their, their, their technology and justice, is that their people have embraced it. Black people like us. But they are wise enough not to be caught in conspiracy theories and embrace the future. I, I just had to say it. So I know many persons are uncertain how this will work. And uh, you have opportunists and political entrepreneurs who will seek to take advantage of uncertainty and so fear and conspiracy fear is among the population i want to take the opportunity to assure everyone that one neither the digital id nor digital currency will be mandatory there will be no compulsion to use them as i described earlier the reason we are implementing these things is to make the lives of citizens easier. If you choose to use them, hooray to you. If you choose not to use them, it is your choice. There will be strong safeguards to ensure that your personal data and information is properly secured and used for the purposes that the citizen has provided it for. No one will be left behind. We know that many persons are not digital natives and will require assistance and support in conducting transactions and interfacing with technology. So we have started to put together a, a strategy as to how we will help persons who may find it difficult in, in using devices or manipulating websites so we, we will have to do uh, some training and support for those people who choose to, who want to be um, involved in this digital transformation. Uh, and we're going to be using our network of post offices across the island to become digital service centers to provide hands-on support. Ladies and gentlemen, digital transformation has been and continues to be a priority of this administration. While we have made significant progress, the pace at which digital transformation is moving globally means that we have to accelerate our own transformation. This is why I recently appointed a new cabinet minister, Senator, Senator Dr. The Honorable Dana Morris Dixon, who has been given direct oversight for skills and transformation. I now want to share with you two additional efforts on the way. The first is the development of our first ever national digital government strategy. This strategy document currently under development will serve as a guide for the whole of government approach to digital transformation. It will set ambitious but realistic targets about how we can harness digitization to achieve the things we all care about, like greater competitiveness, greater social inclusion, and greater value for money. 
It would also detail the institutional upgrading that will work, that we must undertake to deliver on our ambitious goals. I look forward to the completion of this strategy in the next several months. The second is the launch of the ICT Authority. In every leading digital country in the world, from Estonia to the United Kingdom, to Uruguay, to Korea, there is an institution that drives digital transformation from the center. For Jamaica, this will be the ICT Authority. This institution, which already exists in law, will be similar to the government digital services in the United Kingdom. In fact, some persons are encouraging us to rebrand the ICT Authority as Jamaica Digital Services to reflect the service orientation that the institution must have. The, digital, the Jamaica Digital Service, I'm not saying we have rebranded it, but I'm just rolling with the words, the Jamaica Digital Service will be home to a series of cross-government tools that will make digital transformation at scale, meaning right across the government, a reality. These tools include a single government domain, which we, we have partially but not fully, a data exchange platform, a payments platform, a notification service, and many more. We have a great advantage of promoting this at this time as there are open source versions of all these tools already designed and tested by other countries which we can have access to adopt and adapt. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a wonderful and exciting time to participate in the development of Jamaica for the benefit of our people. It is a time to be a part of the solution to address our many challenges. Jamaica is experiencing a remarkable economic rebound from the pandemic. Our economy remains on a strong growth trajectory. And I must say this, with inflation trending down. know, I, I, I noticed that Minister Hill led the clap. <laughs> uh, inflation always has a kind of lag effect on its way down. Uh, on its way up, the impacts are almost immediate. It just wipes out income. But it takes a little time to come back down. But more than that, it takes a longer time for incomes to adjust. So on the back end of inflation, people are really hit hard. Coming out of COVID, where people lost income, people lost employment, and then to be hit by inflation, it's a miserable time for households, miserable time for people who have fixed income, miserable time for people who are unemployed with no income. The government understands this. We understand this. We understand the pressure that people are feeling right across Jamaica. There could be two responses. One, we could just throw caution to the wind and spend capriciously. But that wouldn't solve the problem because one-off transfers are not going to be sufficient to return purchasing power when you are in a long-term period of inflation, a year or more. The strategy has to be how do we get income levels up? How do we increase productivity to sustain the increased level of income? And how do we get that productivity and that increased motivation from an increased income?
to translate into economic growth. Whatever criticisms are leveled at the government, one that cannot be leveled is that we have managed this economy the best that any other government of Jamaica has ever managed the economy to recover from a global threat. It may not mean anything to you presently, but in the near future, as the economy adjusts, as the new minimum wage takes effect, as the increased pensions that we announce take effect, and they have to be further increased, I'm aware of that, as the new wage levels take effect and are increased, you're going to see a massive change for the better. The other problem that we have are the pain points that people experience. Collection of garbage, public transportation, and interfacing with government services. That adds to the misery index. We have started with making investments in the collection of garbage. We have investments in place to increase the number of buses. The strategies that we have put in place and the new legislation in place regarding transportation and road traffic and the ticketing system will bring greater order to public transportation and reduce the difficulties that people have. There are other pain points, for example, water. There's not much we can do about that in the, in the near term. We have a drought and we have to manage the drought, but the infrastructure is being put in place to ensure that we can deal with those pain points. So I think it's very important that in the context of this inflationary period, which has wiped out incomes and placed households in a disadvantageous situation where people lose hope, it is important to point out to them the proper narrative to counter the negative narrative that opportunists and political entrepreneurs will try to use as the dominant description of the situation, which may make people take perverse decisions, decisions that are not in their best interest. 